Shalom, everybody. We are continuing <coughs> with where we left off in the Kutei Alachot, the laws of Nefilat Apaim, falling on one's, fa- one's face in the morning prayer, and also afternoon prayer, right after the Shemona Yisra. Discourse number four, which again is based on Likutei Moran, lesson 24, where the main theme is doing mitzvot out of joy, out of simcha, brings you to connect to the infinite light. And at this point, Rav Nosin is going into the details of when that happens, when a person is ready to receive the infinite light shining into them as a result of being Bisimcha. So Rav Nosin, continuing where we left off in the last class, we're in the middle of paragraph 15, where Rav Nosin began to dissect, to dissect this unbelievably amazing concept of knowing and not knowing as one. Where he explains the famous expression found in many books of Tachlit HaYedi'ah De Lo Neda or She Lo Neda The goal of knowing is to not know at all And Rav Nosin opens it up to say that they're simultaneous That the greatest perception of the greatest tzaddikim Is they're able to know and to not know at the same time As opposed to stages, it's really happening at once It's knowing but the completion of the knowing is because I don't know, and that's how a person is perceiving. The person is perceiving knowledge through not knowing. It's, uh, it's unexplainable in a way, because how do you do that? So that's why Renosin stressed in the, earlier in this, in this paragraph that only the great tzaddikim who have mastered doing such good deeds with, with joy are able to reach this, and they're holding by this. We can just talk about it from the outside, but these tzaddikim, they're actually holding at this high level. But Rav Nosen wants to teach us that this is how a person perceives. A person perceives in life by dafka, specifically not knowing. His exception, acceptance, his accepting of not knowing is the key how to perceive. It's an amazing training. Each person at their level, for sure, especially the big tzaddikim. But even what we can take with us, little us, is that exists this idea that to realize the knowing comes when you accept and admit that you don't know. That's when the knowing in life, the knowledge comes to you. So Rav Nosin, after opening this up, and this is really a, a big handle for us to enter this concept. So Rav Nosin wants to show now how the other very spiritual, very high terms that Rabbi Nachman uses in Lesson 24 are all connected to and associated with this knowing and not knowing. Watch what he says. He says, We have no sin. Ki ha-yedi'a ve-he'eder ha-yedi'a hem bechinat ha-radifa ve-ha-me'akev. He says, For the concept or the actual knowing and the lack of knowing, they themselves are similar are the concept of what Rabbi Nachman mentions in Lesson 24, Likut Imran, the re- pursuing, the running of the mind to pursue and perceive the infinite light, and at the same time being prevented. Me'akev, the keter, these are the terms in Lesson 24, preventing the person's mind from advancing. So per- one hand, the person is running to perceive, and then he's being bounced back, pushed away, so if Nosen wants to point out that, you see, when you're thinking about running forward and stopping going back, so I'm not at all focused on the concept of knowing and not knowing. I'm being introduced to the momentum. There's Radifa, the person is running to pursue, running to pursue, and then he's pushed back. So a person takes this on a t- totally different picture. You know what's happening? They're pushing me back. Rav Nosen says, this itself is the concept of knowing and not knowing, being the key together to reach perception. So you're running, the mind is running to pursue, and then it's pushed back. Why is this happening? Why is this benefit? Why is this necessary? Because the me'akev, the the boundary pushing a person back, is what's allowing for the lack of knowing. (laughs) I want to know, and they're pushing me back, so automatically I'm lacking the knowing. So no sense pointing out, that's why it's happening. The being pushed back is in order to infuse the person 
with he'adira yadiyah, the lacking of knowing. And that's how he is going to get somewhere in life. That's how the person is going to reach perception. This is how a person perceives. It's phenomenal, this concept. Because we're trained, we're taught in normal education, even Jewish Torah education, that absorb, absorb knowledge, more Torah, more study, more intellect, more knowledge, more knowledge, more knowledge. And that's how you expand yourself. And you're saying, no, the way to truly perceive true perception is on one hand, you're absorbing to perceive, and then you're pushed back. The pushing back causes the lacking of knowledge, of awareness, of perception, and that's how you perceive. That's how it works in life. It's something unbelievable. You can't tell this to people to accept it. What? You tell me going backward is going forward? What in the world? And the answer is yes. That's how life is. Life itself has setbacks. And why? It's not like, oh, it's not supposed to be like this. Come on. I thought life was like roses and 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 beautiful greenery and nice and everything's fine and dandy and good. What is this? I didn't sign up for this. And the answer is no. This is how you enter. This is the test. Is that you accept the the ma'kev, the 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 prevention, the obstacle preventing you from advancing. You accept that, that this is the key to perception. I'm not knowing. What do you want? I want to learn more Torah. You guys are not letting me to learn Torah. I want to do this. You're not letting me. Hashem, why aren't you letting me to go forward? Because this is how you reach it. This is how you reach it in life. It's unbelievable, this concept. So Vanosin says, knowing and not knowing is synonymous to this concept of running and being pushed back, mentioned in Likut Yimran Lesson 24. Vanosin wants to show how this connects to all the pieces of the lesson. Rabbi Nachman in Lesson 24 mentions various concepts which seem like different. And now he's showing they're all one. Okay? He's expressing them in different formalities. And now he's showing that they're really all together. Okay? So one more time. This you cannot understand at all. That the running forward and being pushed back is one? One in the world? And he says, yes. In truth, they're running forward, the redifa, and being bounced back, it's together. They work together. It's one, and that the result of both of them together come to the desired goal. That a person reaches the perception specifically by being bounced back. Because specifically through both of them, they're running forward and being bounced back. Nimshach hahasaga. Is drawn the perception that we want, the perception of the infinite light, which on a practical level translates as having clarity in life. Getting the clarity in life is like this. Getting clarity in life is through unclarity. Unbelievable. <laughs> you know, what when, when in the world? This is how it is. That the clarity comes from the, the lack of clarity. Okay? So this is how that it's specifically through them together, working together, they're running forward and then being pushed back by the Keter is how a person reaches perception in the format and he introduces another term mentioned by Rabbi Nachman in the lesson taken from the Zohar, Parshat Noach, page 65a. Mate vela mate. Mate la mate means reaching and not reaching. It sounds less harsh. When you say running forward, ready fa, and then ma'akev being bounced back, that's like very tough, aggressive. That's very like harsh. Here, but mate vela mate is reaching and not reaching. Reaching and not reaching. I've reached, but I'm not reaching. That's more delicate, more subtle. I can accept that. And he's saying this is also the same concept. Mate vela mate is the idea of knowing and not knowing together, of running and being pushed back together. And it works, it's one unit. Rav Nassim is trying to stress also, they're one. They work together. You can't have just mate, and you can't have just not mate. You can't have just reaching and not reaching. You need both as a single unit. That's how it works. You can't now in life, oh, everything's beautiful, everything's amazing, I'm on a high. Oh, if only can always be like this. But no, that's not how you're going to get anywhere. It's after experiencing a refreshing experience in life, an uplifting spiritual illumination, and then it's taken away from you, pushing you back. It's illumination, but not where you want to be, of course, and yet you're pushed back. 
and you take it negatively. What, what are they doing taking me away from this Gan Eden? No. This is how you reach to perceive. That's how it is. These two opposites is the secret to perception. Valken, and Ibrahim Lassen stressing again, Be'emet ha-saga ha-zot he-bechinat ha-sagat ha-tish'a he-chalin ha-nizkarim le'em. So Ibrahim Lassen now ties in. He's amazing, Ibrahim Lassen, what he's doing here. For those who know how to learn the Kuti Moran, he's now connecting various parts, showing they're all one. He's saying this itself, which means the knowing and lack of knowing, the running and being pushed back, the touching and not touching, this itself, these co three concepts which are all the same, is the exact same concept of what's mentioned in this lesson, perceiving the nine chambers. To explain, Ibn Nachman said in this lesson, that when a person now, his mind is running forward because he had the merit to do mitzvot with joy, and by doing mitzvot with joy, he frees the energy of holiness that was trapped in impurity, and now it has legs, it now start, has momentum to go forward, and it begins to activate bracha, blessing in the world, the main blessing being the blessing of the intellect. So the person's intellect now is open, and he joins that intellect, like he says in the lesson, with emuna, meaning as much as I know, I believe there's so much more out there that I don't know. So already the person is doing a reaching and not reaching on their own. If I'm being pushed back, he accepts with emuna there's much more out there than what I'm being perceived, being blessed with to perceive and internalizing. There's much more out there. So he's already doing a joining of intellect and emuna, which are two opposites. Intellect means something solid, concrete, accomplishment. Emuna is intangible, jelly, wobbly. I don't know what's out there. I'm going with has I'm going very carefully. And I'm not hesitant, but very, very careful in every step that I go forward, and I'm joining them together. That allows the person to activate the Keter, okay? And now what happens is that when the person now reaches the Keter, he's bounced back, like we said. And what gets bounced back? The person's intellect. And the intellect of a human being, of a Jew, is divided into three main sections called Chokhmah, Bina, Da'at, right? Each one has a different function. The functioning of knowledge, of wisdom and understanding, each in a different area. When a person bounces back, these three become intermingled, so they become multiplied. They become so intertwined, not they're just adding together, like one plus one plus one is three. No, they become multiplied. It's a tiny because it's so intermingled that it creates a result of nine. Three times three. Three more combinations of these original three in a different arrangement. So become multiplied by each other three times, equaling nine. Okay? So now Rav Nosson and, and he's, he's going to be quoting the Zohar, the Rabbi Nachman quotes. These nine chambers themselves, what they represent, what they serve to be a vehicle to perceive within them what's called the infinite light, which is clarity in life, it itself is made up of knowing and not knowing. So Rav Nosson proves that. What does Rav Nosson know that? Because you just mentioned nine chambers Nine chambers sounds like something concrete, something stable, something tangible. Wow, it's something like real. He says, no, 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 watch. Okay? He says, the, 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 what we mentioned of knowing and not knowing, running and not running, reaching and not reaching, they themselves are the same exact concept of the perception of the nine chambers that were mentioned earlier, that what it says about them, the Zohar says on this page 65a in Parshat Noach, that these nine chambers even though you get the impression that it's an actual accomplishment, it's like actually getting something, but he says, <laughs> these are untangible chambers that you create. You're not even aware about them. But you benefit from them, but you don't grasp them. They're untangible. Like the Zohar says there in 65a, the late man de kaima behu. There's no one who can stand before, stand up within these nine chambers, they're you created them, yes, but they're ungraspable to you. They're beyond your reach. So you can, no one can stand within them. He's quoting in the same section, the same paragraph of the Zohar. And no one can, they can't be attached to. They cannot be connected to, attached to. And they're not knowable. But they do their job. These nine unattainable chambers that you've created, and you would think they came from my 
chokma, bina, dat, my wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So if they're a product of my wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, so rightfully, I should have a grasp to them. I should have uh, tangibility towards them. The answer is no. That's the whole thing here. You create something from something that you have grasped of, something which now is untangible. It's ungraspable. <laughs> but wait, I, I'm, it's part of me. Yeah and no. Because of this multiplication format from the bash, the smashing, in other words, you're, the ket, they're pushing the person back, the mind, so the person is running to perceive his mind, and then his mind is being pushed back, and this smashing causes the multiplication of his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It creates now the scenario created nine chambers that even though they're made up of, they're a byproduct of my quote-unquote tangible knowledge, wisdom, understanding, but because of the scenario, it's something which is intangible. And it has to be that way, what is saying, in order for you to benefit from the nine chambers, what is the benefit? They become nine vessels. These nine chambers, like a chamber, a chamber is a room, which contains within it something else. So these chambers are vessels that within them, the infinite light shines itself into them in an ungraspable format. And the person benefits from the aftermath, the after effect light. And this after effect light is what's needed to shine a person clarity. He can't see directly to the light. He sees the light passing after it came in and just took off. He's left over with the, what's called in Hebrew the Rashimu, the, Rish, the Roshem, the impression. And the impression is strong enough to give a person clarity in life. That's how it works. It comes from an ungraspable, untangible scenario and situation. So late man de kaima behu, velami da bikin, veladian vechul, etc. And again, he's sending you, look at the, the Zohar, Noah 65a, so you can just see how deep this concept is. And if I'm not saying now, so what does this sum up to us on a practical level? What does this tell to me on my low, simple level? This is the concept which you have some grasp of in understanding. Understanding something that you, know, that you don't understand. Understanding that you don't understand, in other words. This is the idea of the goal of knowing is not to know. Because the goal of the idea is to not to know. And the combination of the two will allow you to reach perception in life. This, Rav is going to say many times in his discourses on this lesson 24, is the key for a person to advance. It's not like he would think, to go forward, to go forward. Your setbacks, your being pushed back, is what's going to benefit you more than any, any quote-unquote so-called accomplishment. You're going to gain so much by the setbacks sent from heaven to you in order to build you up. It's Dafka, when you were pushed back in life, that you come to perceive. And you need both of them. You can't think, oh, when am I going to finish the Talmud? When am I going to finish learning? No, 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 no. And it's always, always obstacles. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm stuck. Like 20 years ago, I feel like I'm in the same place. I didn't budge. I'm trying to figure out, break my head on simple Chumash and Rashi. And I can't go on to learn now higher levels of Torah study. And my mind is stuck on stupidities and everything. The answer is you are gaining, you are gaining big time. You don't realize it because you feel the lack. That's also part of it. That you always feel that there's something more out there and you feel far. And, and while this is happening to you, while you're fretting over the seeming negativity of your situation, heaven is letting you advance and you don't realize it. Years later, you begin to see how much you've advanced. You don't know where it came from. It came from the not knowing of life. Is that the shame to be continued?